If you're anything like me, you have lots of ambitious plans for the future. I've got a whole series of new books I want to write, thousands more videos to script, but guess what? None of us may be able to do any of the things we want to do if we don't have our health. Welcome to the Nutrition Facts Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Greger. Today we hear about new research on Alzheimer's from Dr. Dean Ornish, and we share the results of the first randomized controlled trial investigating whether a plant-based diet and lifestyle program may reverse the course of early-stage Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Dean Ornish was the first to show in a randomized controlled trial that a plant-based diet and lifestyle program could apparently reverse the progression of our number one killer, heart disease, opening up arteries without drugs, without surgery. Then he showed the same plant-based program could potentially reverse the course of early-stage prostate cancer, and also elongate telomeres, suggesting an anti-aging effect as well. But when he told me he was going to see if he could reverse the progression of Alzheimer's disease, surely he was biting off a little bit more than he could chew. Dementia is the most feared condition of later life. There's a common misconception that we have no control over whether or not we develop dementia, but the good news is that although Alzheimer's may be incurable, at least it is preventable. There's an emerging consensus that what's good for our hearts is also good for our heads, because clogging of the arteries inside the brain with atherosclerotic plaque is thought to play a role in the development of Alzheimer's dementia. Too much cholesterol in our blood is unanimously recognized to be a risk factor for the development of Alzheimer's disease. Those with a total cholesterol of 225 or more may have nearly 25 times the odds of ending up with amyloid plaques in their brain 10 to 15 years later. After all, what is the Alzheimer's gene, APOE? It codes for the major cholesterol carrier inside the brain. This may explain the so-called Nigerian paradox, where they have only the highest rates of the Alzheimer's gene, but some of the lowest rates of Alzheimer's disease. How is that possible? Genes load the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. The paradox may be explained by their low cholesterol levels, probably due to their diets low in animal fat. So, in terms of dietary guidelines for the prevention of Alzheimer's, we should center our diets around vegetables, legumes, beans, flippies, chickpeas, and lentils, fruits, and whole grains. In other words, the dietary pillar of lifestyle medicine whole food, plant-based nutrition. More of that's too complicated. Plants, plants, and more plants. That may help explain why vegetarians may be up to three times less likely to become demented later in life. But it's not all or nothing. Even just substituting 5% of animal protein with plant protein appears to significantly reduce the risk of dying from dementia. But prevention isn't sexy. When prevention works, nothing happens. But the same diet and lifestyle that helped prevent heart disease was proven to help reverse it. Until then, it was believed that heart disease progression could only be slowed, not stopped or reversed, similar to how Alzheimer's disease is viewed today. So what if you put people with Alzheimer's on the same plant-based program? You don't know until you put it to the test. A randomized, controlled, phase two clinical trial to see if the progression of Alzheimer's disease may be slowed, stopped, or perhaps even reversed by randomizing about 50 men and women diagnosed with early stage Alzheimer's to either make no lifestyle changes for 20 weeks, or to eat a whole food plant-based diet with supplements like vitamin B12, moderate exercise like walking a half an hour a day, stress management like relaxing with breathing exercises, and getting group support over Zoom. 
They measured standard tests of cognition and function, before and after, in each group, as well as objective experimental biomarkers of disease progression. On the clinical dementia rating global scale, which is used to stage the severity of dementia, the control group continued to get worse. But the diet and lifestyle group started to get better. People diagnosed with Alzheimer's getting better? The same seemed to happen when measured with the Alzheimer's disease assessment scale, though this did not reach statistical significance. In using what's called the clinical dementia rating sum of boxes scoring, both groups continued to deteriorate, but the decline was significantly less in the healthy living group. Overall, using what's called the clinical global impression of change scoring, most of the people in the control group kept getting worse, and none showed any improvement, which is what you'd expect with Alzheimer's, whereas about 40% of those in the diet and lifestyle group appeared to be getting better within five months of eating and living healthier. Now, why did some get better and others not? Well, the more they complied with the recommendations, the greater the beneficial impact on their cognition and function. This helps to explain why studies of less intensive lifestyle interventions were not sufficient to stop disease progression, let alone actually improve cognition and function. The biggest limitation of the study is that, you know, unlike drug trials, where you can give people a disguised placebo sugar pill, when a study involves major diet and lifestyle changes, you can't rule out the placebo effect, especially for self-reported subjective how's-your-memory-been type questions. But the researchers also measured objective investigational biomarkers of disease progression and saw the same trajectory— improvements in the interventional group and worsening in the control group, with the same apparent dose-response effect meaning the more they improve their diet and lifestyle, the more dramatic the effect. Compare that to the latest Alzheimer's drugs, which may not even work at all. All you may get for your $56,000 is a 1 in 3 chance of swelling or bleeding in your brain. When the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the drug anyway, the head of the American Geriatric Society replied, my head just exploded. The bottom line is that there's only one diet that's ever been shown to help reverse our leading cause of death, heart disease, in the majority of patients, a plant-based diet. If that's all a plant-based diet can do, reverse the number one killer of men and women, uh, then shouldn't that be the default diet until proven otherwise? and the fact that can also be so effective in preventing, arresting, or reversing the progression of other leading killers, like high blood pressure and type 2 diabetes, and now maybe even early-stage Alzheimer's disease, would seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming. In our next story, we look at the human impact of improving the cognition and function of Alzheimer's patients. I released a video profiling Dr. Dean Ornish's landmark new study in the leading peer-reviewed Alzheimer's translational research journal, a randomized controlled trial showing that a plant-based diet and lifestyle program may significantly improve cognition and function after 20 weeks in many patients with early-stage Alzheimer's disease. About 70% remained stable or actually improved in the plant-based intervention group, whereas in the control group about 70% got worse, and not a single person got better. But no matter how significant the results, the dry statistics just don't convey the human impact. Many patients who experienced improvement reported regaining cognition and function they had lost, but how does that actually translate into real life? Well, for example, several patients in the intervention group reported that they had been unable to read a book or watch a movie because they kept forgetting what they just read or watched and had to keep starting over. But after the plant-based diet and lifestyle changes, they got better, such that now they were able to read and watch shows again. One individual reported that it used to take him weeks to finish reading a book, but after participating in the study, he was able to do it in a matter of days. 
Another participant, a former business executive, reported regaining the ability to manage his own finances and investments. It was so much a part of my life, he said, who I am and who I was. It was hard saying that part of me was just gone. But now I'm back to reconciling our finances monthly. I keep up to date on our investments. A lot of self-worth comes back. Another one said that for five years she had been unable to prepare their family business's financial reports, but now she's doing so accurately. A deep sense of identity is returning. It's given me a new lease on life, and yet it's a familiarity and something I've always prided myself on. I'm coming back like I was prior to the Alzheimer's disease being diagnosed. I feel like I'm me again, an older but better version of me. But even words are hard to describe such transformations. One of Dr. Ornish's study participants gave us permission to share his story. Dan Jones is a musician at military events and parades who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. What have you noticed that you could be now that you couldn't be before? Well, for one thing, I had a set of about eight tunes that I played in the parade. Right. And I could just go straight through them from one into the other. Um, I played for an hour and a half without stopping. Good ones. It was pretty close. They moved darn slow in that parade. <laughs> I was leaving them behind walking. I kept having to stop and waiting for them to catch up. Was that something different? Uh, yeah, no, it was. Well, that I could remember the order, that I could make the transition from tune to tune without messing up and getting confused about which tune I was playing. Those were all problems I'd had when we were playing at the, the graduation ceremony. You know, I'd, I'd forget which tune was coming next. I'd get worried about it, and I'd start making mistakes. And this just went like clockwork. A lot of it had to do with practice, but the tunes we played before, I played hundreds of times. And I just, it was, I was messing up. And and the parade, I mean, heart didn't mess up with arm. And we were messing up because you had a hard time remembering. Because I had a hard time remembering, and I'd get confused about different tunes. It was not a pleasant experience. It was unpleasant enough that, like I said, I went home and I put them down. Now, um, it was one day a couple of weeks ago when I really had the drones in tune. It was in the evening, I was out on the front porch playing, and it was just so beautiful, I played for two hours. And I just stood there and played, and I'm crying because I'm happy. It was just, it was so nice to me. Did that make you feel better about yourself, too? It did. In what way? Mm -hmm. I just felt like I, you know, I could do something. Like, um, I... I am the worth again, so to speak. Um, something that was important to me was giving me back. Here's what the head of Harvard's Brain Center at Mass General had to say. Big Pharma has invested billions in the effort to find medications to treat the disease, but only two Alzheimer's drugs have been approved in the last 20 years, one of which has already just been pulled off the market, and the other is minimally effective, extremely expensive, and often has pesky side effects, such as brain swelling or bleeding into the brain. In contrast, the intensive lifestyle changes implemented in this study have been shown to improve cognition and function at the cost of, like, buying broccoli, and the only side effects are positive ones. We would love it if you could share with us your stories about reinventing your health through evidence-based nutrition. Go to nutritionfacts.org slash testimonials. We may be able to share it on social media to help inspire others. If you want to see any graphs, charts, graphics, images, and studies mentioned here, please go to the Nutrition Facts podcast landing page. There you'll find all the detailed information you need, plus links to all the sources we cite for each of these topics. My latest book, How Not to Age, has been out for about half a year now. Check it out from your local public library. And of course, all the proceeds I receive from the sales of all my books goes directly to charity. NutritionFacts.org is a nonprofit science-based public service where you can
and sign up for free daily updates on the latest in nutrition research with bite-sized videos and articles. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, no kickbacks, strictly non-commercial. I'm not selling anything. I just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition.